Hello my friends. One of the best natural materials to be used as a bowstring that the native peoples have used was to make strings from the intestines of animals. And here I will show you how to make a gut bowstring. This hog casing is sold in the grocery stores and at this time of the year um, the stores get it in because it's deer season and it, this is salted that's what that's what all this is salt so what I'm doing is taking the casing I'm going to soak it and rinse the salt off of this and then I'll wring it out and uh, process it into my bowstring and the nice thing with purchasing this <clears throat> is they already have the uh, fat removed there's because there's fat that uh, clings to the length of the the intestine and that uh, needs trimmed off because the, the fat would go rancid and spoil the uh, casing just like if you were making jerky you would remove whatever fat is in the jerky. So this will make it real quick to make the bowstring. I'll finish this and then show you what's next. Here's all the gut after it's been rinsed it's still wet and I'm going to lay all this out so I see what I have to work with and it measures, there's pieces, individual pieces in here, and they measure between three foot and six foot. And there is 12 pieces, pieces of gut in that one package. So once we get these laid out, then we're gonna do the twist to them. And the shorter ones will need to be spliced together. And I'll show you the method of splicing the gut. Here I'm taking two of the shorter lengths. And what I'm going to do is pull the end open on the one. Open it up like this. And another one, I'll do the same. Spread it. Then I take my knife, I put a slit about a quarter inch in each one of these. Tough stuff, there it is. Take this hole, the loose end of the second strip, put it in there and draw it through. Bring it up close to the first end. And take the end of this one, put it in this hole, and draw it up through. Then the two hold together like that. Don't pull them tight them so that they spread like that and there you can hardly tell the thickness difference now that's going to make a six foot length so we take two of these six foot lengths and we're going to start tying them together we take the end Tie a knot and 
this slips over top of a nail that I have in the table. Right there. Now with the two pieces attached, I'm going to start twisting. I'm going to go both the same way and cross. Roll it and cross. This is how you do the uh, fiber cordage. And after you do about four to six of these, then separate the length and then continue your twisting. Twist and rotate over. We're going to do this for the entire length. One end is about a foot longer than the other and if that's an issue where it might be short then we just add another length to it. right there. You can see I have the tension on it. And we'll keep that until it dries. Here I have two of the gut cords and I let them dry overnight and I re-wet them, just dampened them to soften them. And uh, what I'm going to do, these are the two shorter ones, I'm going to uh, twist these together and make a thicker cord. It would give it uh, a lot more pondage, a lot more strength. And right now these are too thin for pulling with your finger. So I w want these thicker to, for the comfort of uh, drawing the bow. and. Uh, fitting into the knock a little bit better. Uh, the primitive arrows were had uh, thicker or wider knocks than the modern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave two tags. I'll cut these knots off. But I'll leave uh, two tags to start with and I'm going to tie this with a piece of sinew or not sinew, piece of gut and uh, to hold them together at this point and what I'm going to do is make an eyelet. The eye that's going to be the terminate the end of the the uh, string and uh, I have to twist them the way they're they're twisted. So we'll twist this way and loop. And I'll do this for about uh, four or five inches The area that I spliced to make these longer, they're a weak spot. So with a double cord, uh, that's uh, going to be pretty weak. But with doing this, with there's uh, four pieces of gut, that splice will become almost insignificant. And we want to go enough that we can make an eyelet that will be able to slide down this, the bow stave or the bow uh, limb. It's no longer a stave, it's a bow. So this area that I cut, now I can loosen that up and I'm going to uh, braid or twist these two t tags in with the two base cords that I'm twisting. Okay, now this is going to splice right in. So these two will twist here, and these two will, that one goes to here. Here you can see how the eyelets formed, and it blends in. These will be trimmed, the loose ends. 
and we just finish the cord through the whole length. As you're getting to the end, I'm going to tie the end here and I'll be stretching. I'm going to dampen this whole cord again, then after it's dampened, I'll stretch it and let it dry under tension. Here's the finished Iroquois bow and you can see here that the handle is leather that's lashed around the gripping area. The string is um, the gut string. There's four, four layers uh, twisted together. The one end has a loop that's uh, spliced in, so that's a permanent loop. The other end is tied with the bowyer's knot, or it's same as a timber hitch. And that one remains on the end of the bow. There's a tag left on the end, and that's in case the string stretches or if you need to put that string onto another bow. Uh, you have some about six inches to play with, to work with. Thanks for watching my friends. Bye bye.